السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أهلا وسهلا Welcome guys My name is Jakat Zaman Hope you guys are having a wonderful time uh, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah Another live session, live stream Q&A question So that I can help you guys try and answer some of your questions that you might have And if I don't know the answer Then you'll have to Find the answer somewhere else, inshallah. Okay, so anyway, today FIFA is going on as well. So, as is, is it half time or something? There's people watching the Liverpool match versus Real Madrid. Uh, I did watch a little bit of it, but um, not not too much of a football fan. So, okay, guys. So anyway, let's start start then. with your questions. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Umar, ahlan wa sahlan, ahlan wa sahlan. 0121. What is the ruling on human transplant from a pig? If there's a need for it, then it's allowed. Yeah, so if there's a need, point to Umar Yusuf, rahimullah, it would be permitted. If there's a need for it. Okay, so as you guys can see, I am wearing this hat. Let me know what you guys think of this hat. This is a new hat that was uh, gifted to me by one of my students. And he's actually started his own company. Right? It's called Salam. I don't think he's got a website yet. Yeah, but it's called Salam. Uh, and these are, I mean, I remember I told you I've been looking for hats that fit my head. Yeah, my big head. So this hat is, he gave me four hats. There's this one and there's some more hats. I'll show you guys in a bit. Yeah, and I just want to tell you, ask you guys what you guys think of the hats. And... Would it be, which color would be uh, best fitting me? So this is the black one so far. Right, so. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shabazz, ahlam wa sahlan. Can you give advice regarding time management? How do you get so much done? Um, okay, so I'm not the best person for time management. I still mess up a lot of my time. But I'll tell you what, what my tips are. If you ever want to... Uh, if you ever want to um, time manage, what you have to realize is everyone uh, is different in how they time manage. So just think about it. What are the things that you do that you do you always do on time? So, for example, like pray salat, right? So generally, you might pray salat on time, go work on time, um, you know, go to sleep on time. So what you have to do is if you want to do time management, you have to fit the things you want to do around those times that's the key that is so fit like let's say you want to read a book fit your book reading before salat or after salat or before sleep or when you wake up in the morning uh, or if you want to training exercise fit, fit it around those kind of times and that's going to be the best thing for you that's going to be the best way to keep track of uh of time otherwise what tends to happen is if you don't have like a, a peg an anchor that you anchor your time with. Uh, you, you, you're you going to probably do it on some days and some days you're not going to do it. That's what I find with myself as well. So try to find a time that you're always going to do something and then before that time, utilize that time. And that way, you know, you start to become more consistent with doing actions. And generally what happens is it's just creating a habit. So there's a book called Atomic Habits. I don't know if you've uh, come across it. But what you have to remember is habits are basically something you train yourself in once you train yourself into a habit then that's it you're sorted all right habits done and you got no problem but if you don't train yourself into a habit then getting into that habit is the problem and it usually takes you two or three weeks to get into a habit uh right welcome you're welcome sharif will yeah, Swadiqi, the kufi is cool. Yeah, the kufi, yeah, like the hat. Yeah, I like the hat as well. Yeah, if it's nicely on my head. See, sometimes what happens is the hats are too small because my head is big and it just looks like my head looks big and the hat looks like looks a bit like a, a funny shaped head. But yeah, I think uh, I like this this one as well. Yeah, it looks a bit nice as well. Yeah, I like this design. I don't know how long the color is going to last. Though. That's the only problem I have with with hats is the the color. Some people say if the Quran is clear book, then why do we need hadith and consensus of scholars? 
So we'll say if the uh, uh, okay. So there's a long answer to this question, which obviously will take time to explain. And there's a quick answer. Usually, what tends to happen with these kind of questions is the people asking this question. This is obviously not not to you, brother uh, FC. Uh, but this generally, when people ask certain some questions, they tend to kind of see Islam as being like a very very oversimplified uh, concept. Whereas in reality, Islam has layers to it. So, for you know, when people say things like uh, "all you have to do, all all Muslims have to do is follow the Quran and Sunnah," make it as though any human being can simply just pick up the Quran, pick up the Sunnah, and just follow. In reality, that's not how it works. You need experts for it. Now, what we have to understand about this particular question is, is when you say the Quran is clear, like in the Quran, Allah says, "Kitab Mubin," it's a clear book. What is it clear against? Like. In contrast to this, what's the opposite of it? So an opposite of that would be something like a medical book or an engineering book, which is not clear, which requires so much, like kind of trying to decipher what's happening over here. The Quran is a very straightforward book. That's what it's basically saying. Like if there is a person who knows Arabic language, learns the Arabic language, reads the Quran, it's very, very clear what the Quran is saying. The Quran's message for believing in Allah is very straightforward. Like you don't need like a certain age or you don't need a certain level of qualification to understand that the Quran's message is the oneness of Allah and that we believe in the Prophet Sallallahu and that our success, uh, you know, is in obedience to Allah. There's no kind of like confusion in that. Yeah, the application of the laws, that's different. That is, that's why in the Quran, Allah says in the Quran, first alu ahl al-dhikr, ask the people of knowledge. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, is it possible that those people who know and those who don't know are the same? No, it's not. They're not the same. Yeah, the difference is clearly Allah tells us there's a difference in knowledge. So when it comes to the clarity of the Quran, it's talking about the clarity of the message of what it's giving. It's not something which is like a coded message, very difficult to decipher. Yeah, does that make sense? That's the short answer. A longer answer obviously would require you for require me to go through a whole series of videos, which I was actually thinking of doing go through a whole series of videos and show why we can't just read Quran on its own uh, to understand Islam fully. Like, and then that would that would probably probably be like uh, 10 videos, maybe 20 videos to thoroughly go through all this sort of like question. And there's like a lot of people out there who have answered these kind of objections, but I was thinking maybe I'll, I might do something on that. Uh, 27 Sa'id Salam are headstones permitted on graves? Yes. Muhammad Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Ya Ustad, kayf haluk? Anna bi khair, alhamdulillah. Wa kayf anta, ya Muhammad? Allahum barik, Allahum barik, tabdu jameel al-yawm. Ha 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 ha. Aydan akmalt kitab al-akhar al-yawm. Ismuhu Nuktat al-i'rab. Kana wa fijid. Ahlam wa sahla. Marhaban. Barakallah fi ilmika wa fi dirasatika aydan. Wa anta ajmal. I want to ask the fadl, ya Azir. Tafaddal, ask, inshallah. So let's check out on Curious Cat if anyone has asked on Curious Cat. All right, let's see what Curious Cat is saying. I don't know, what's the what's the latest score on the Champions League match? Okay, no questions on Curious Cat. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Looks like I think a lot of people are uh, busy with that. I have epilepsy. Often reading can trigger a fit. Often I'm struggling with reading Quran, but can I play audio Quran and follow as? Yes. May Allah give you shifa, my brother. May Allah give you shifa, Kamil. Yes, you can do that. You can follow, read the Quran. You can follow it, uh, inshallah. Um, and, you know, are there any of you guys who are suffering from uh, illnesses or, or problems in your life? May Allah give you shifa, Kamil. Alleviate the problems that you, got, you guys are going through. All right. So. It's starting to get a bit cold now. Is there someone wearing this jumper today or cardigan today? It's starting to feel a bit cold. I don't know. I was going to go for a jog after Isha, but it's a bit it's raining outside, so I don't know. Should I go? Should I not go? Because I've got cycling in tomorrow's on. You're welcome, brother FC, Elikr FC. You're welcome. Ahlan wa sahlan. Marhaban. You're welcome. So a lot of, uh, a lot of these kind of questions with regards to... Um, what you asked there, uh, a lot of people have these kind of questions, so it's a very. So I was thinking to myself, maybe I'll make a, a video on it or 
or video series of videos on it just to clarify these kind of points as well. Yeah, Allah. Right. So, uh, anyway, besides that, I've actually bought this week. I've actually bought a new gadget. So the gadget is is a is a hard, is, is external hard drive. So because I do a lot of recording and I have to save that those recordings onto external drive, um, then I have to buy these hard drives. These are so I've actually this is my last one that I bought. This is my last one. It's a four. It's a four. Uh, it's a four terabyte, four terabyte hard drive. Yeah. So because there's a, a lot of recordings that I, I have to save. Otherwise, what can happen is um, let's say for example, you know, I love protect the videos on my channel but let's say it gets wiped out one day something happens then i have a backup yes yeah, so these are like hardcore hard copy uh, backup for for my stuff and uh, so regularly i think like maybe like every once a year maybe i need like a new once or one, one and a half years i need a new uh, to buy a new uh, hard drive that's a, one of the problems with recording you have to back stuff up so you can't just rely on having it on youtube or having it on uh, Vimeo or having it on, you know, iCloud or your computer because something could happen all of a sudden and you lo lose everything. That's happened to me in the past as well. Lost a lot of work because of that. So I don't know what do you guys what do you guys use to back up your work? Start any good sources for me to study and memorize the Al Fiyah and Malik. Strong understanding. Uh, I don't know any sources about memorizing. Uh, studying, yeah, there's lots of Arabic. Uh, Sources available for Al Fibri Malik. Yeah, so all you have to do is go to Google and type in Al Fibri Malik, and you'll get lots of Arabic um, videos on that. Um, memorizing, I mean, what I find the best thing to memorize is always have a, a, a buddy or have a group. So maybe you can like, make a group with someone, some people who are memorizing, and then what you do is you set yourself targets. So you have like every week you've got like you want to memorize 10, 10 couplets. And then you memorize them, and then after after ten days or after one week, you have to like on your on your group, you have to um, record the ten with the mistakes, and then put it up. And like that, it kind of like keeps you it keeps you motivated. I find, yeah, because I, I did that once with uh, I remember with Okudra Rasam Mufti, yeah. So memorize that. Um, but yeah, you can you can try something like that. I don't know what other what other way, but online, yeah. Uh, al Fibri Malik. Um, there's actually Ibrahim, Sheikh Ibrahim Adham. Is, is it Sheikh Ibrahim Adham? Uh, what's his name again? Sheikh. Uh, no, his name is. I forgot his name now. Oh yeah, his name is Sheikh Sheikh Adham Al As Al Asimi, Sheikh Adham Al Asimi. So he's got lots of mashallah uh, videos that he's done in different books. He's got so many. I mean, he's a uh, surpass me, but he's all in Arabic, obviously. Yeah, so check out check through his playlist, and his Arabic is very easy to follow as well, and it's very clear. Yeah. Wa alaikum as salam, S. Hussein. Ahla wa sahlan. Ahla wa sahlan. Welcome, 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 welcome to our live stream. I hope you're well. I hope your family's good. Is it from Seagate? Uh, I have the same one with one terabyte space. Uh, this is actually from, yeah, Seagate. Seagate. Yeah, Seagate's a quite good quality. I mean, I think most of mine are from Seagate. Uh, yeah, Seagate's a good ones. Uh, Zed Melo, alaikum as salam, rahmatullah, ahla wa salam. Can you pray two fard salat with one tayammum? According to Hanafis, yes, you can. Yeah, so if you check out my if you check out my kuduri on tayammum, I actually mention it in there. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. This is uh, my shalajit tea. Yeah, so this is hot water with shalajit mixed with it. Qasim Hussain, alaikum assalam. What's the ruling of joining Maghrib and Isha during British summertime? Uh, I would say no. You, you don't do that. I mean, pray your Maghrib and then delay delay the Isha by one hour. Pray one hour later. Um, and I know some other madhabs, they do join the two salats together. 
but I would say no because it's possible for a person to delay the salat for one hour. It's not too long. Muhammad Shahid Yasin alaikum salam. Best way to get a deep understanding of Islam: study. That's the best way. Study the Quran. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I always say this to you guys: if all Muslims read the Quran or studied the meaning of the Quran from beginning to end, it would help them a lot. Yeah, without without any doubt. I guarantee you will help you a lot. A lot of your doubts, a lot of your... Because a lot of people out there, they have their own understanding of what Islam is based upon what they've been exposed to since a young age. And a lot of Muslims, for some reason, I have no idea why, a lot of Muslims will not read the translation of the Quran. And a lot of Muslims will not study study with someone the meaning of the Quran. Uh, which I'm very... I mean, there's lots available now. You can... Mufti Abdurrahman Mangira has covered the whole Quran. Uh... Uh, Dr. Yasser Qadi has covered the whole Quran as well. And there's many other people who have done a whole series. I think uh, on Seeker's Guidance as well, there's a, there's a sheikh who's also covered the whole Quran as well. So there's like no excuse now online. There's so much available for the entire Quran. Just go through the Quran. That's, that's, that's the best place to start. That's how the Sahaba started. Sharif will, assalamu alaikum, you have about 10 years of videos. 4 terabyte is going to come up a tidbit short. Yeah, no, that's why I've got like about five of these. I've got like about five of these. The other ones I think are about two, two terabyte, one terabyte, two terabyte ones. And then uh, this is a four terabyte one. Um, I was, I was thinking of getting like the bigger ones, eight terabyte, ten terabyte ones. Then I said, what's the point? If, if something happens to that, then I've lost like a lot. So if I have like four terabytes, then four terabytes is manageable. Um... Uh, Mustard, the best way to improve vocab and listening skills. Um, I mean, I, if you're asking me how I do it, the best way I, I find is just listen to it as much as you can. And uh, anytime you come across a word that you don't understand, like mark it or stop this, stop, pause it and ask someone what it means. Alhamdulillah, when I was studying, I used to have this uh, Arab friend from Tunisia. And he would like listen to an Arabic talk and then every time I, I would say to him I don't understand what he says there he'll stop it then explain to me that this is what he's saying and then and that way it kind of clarified for me and I was thinking maybe that might be a good idea as well for me if I uh, maybe do like a series where I just put an audio on and then after after like every so often I stop it and then I start explaining what the what he's saying I mean that could be a possibility yeah maybe that, that might be something I, might, I can do uh, Samira, wa alaikum salam. What if you delay less than one hour after Maghrib? I mean, there are some scholars who do allow before one hour, but I personally stick to one hour just to be on the safe side. Yeah, because I feel that that is the kind of like uh, that's the kind of like uh, safe ihtiyat, you know, safe kind of time that I'd be comfortable with. But yeah, there are some who do allow slightly before one hour, and like I said, some scholars do allow Maghrib. And then straight after Maghrib, praying the Isha. Can we trust Yasir Qadi Tafsir? Um, I haven't heard anyone that's uh, that's brought something up in his Tafsir. Yeah, I haven't heard anyone. If you do, then you can possibly, uh, you can ask me, inshallah. Uh, but I haven't heard anyone that said that. I haven't listened to all of it. But sometimes on the radio, it's on. When I'm in the car on uh, Unity FM. And uh, sometimes and it seems fine to me. Um, but if someone does find something which is uh, problematic, then... You can raise it with a scholar. The thing is, look, uh, if you're studying, if you're a student of knowledge, one thing you have to remember is you always have to be ready to ask people if you're unsure about what someone said. Even if I say certain things, check it out with others, other, other scholars, ask them, look, you said this, what do you think? Because that way what happens is then you start to become more, especially when you're student, I'm talking about students here, students of knowledge, is then you start to become more um, conscious about what you're listening to, what you're reading as well. Same with books. Uh, Habib, ahla wa sahlan, wa alaikum as What is the advice if someone wants to study abroad but also wants to marry? Um, I would say if you get married and you find a partner who is very, very accommodating for your studies and understands and, and helps you a lot, then alhamdulillah, noor ala noor. But if you don't, you're going to find it very hard to study. And when I was studying, there were some students who were actually married and a lot of them did struggle. Like, I would say most of the people who are married did struggle. And some of them quit. Some of them like joined other courses uh, because it's a big commitment. You have to think to yourself, 
there's another human being that's going to come into your life and you've got responsibility, you've got to give them time. So traveling, you might be able to bear a lot of the difficulties, but they might not be able to travel to bear. So I would say, you know, just be be careful. Uh, Mullah says, Wa alaikum as salam, rahmatullahi wa sahlan. Silu, wa alaikum as salam. When is the earliest time to pray Isha according to Hanafi? So according to Hanafi, according to the Sahibain, they say when the two, when when the when the redness in the sky disappears, they call this, I mean, it's called um, nautical twilight. So you have civil twilight, nautical twilight, astronomical twilight. So when the nautical twilight disappears, it's the redness in the sky. What's the earliest? Uh, Assalamu alaikum, extra most bestest Arabic weekly reader. Yeah, I'm thinking something like that. But it's just like these ideas I get in my head, Sharif. And then I think to myself, oh no, is this going to impact on all my other videos I'm making? Because it's good, it's, it's good to, it's easy to come out with ideas, but the difficulty is trying to be consistent with them and you know see all the way through. Yeah, so this is why I can come out with ideas, but I don't want to sort of like uh, you know uh, leave them halfway through or something like that. The Prophet ﷺ went for meditation to the cave of Hira. Do we call it is his sunnah and is this practice can be applicable as to us today? Um, this was before Islam, obviously. So things that the Prophet ﷺ did before Islam, we don't necessarily call them sunnah. So the sunnah is something which is done after Islam. Yeah, so after Islam, sunnah. So for example, you know, Contemplation on the creation of Allah is part of what the Quran tells us. Tafakkur fi khalqis samawati wal ard. This is if you want to call it meditation, call it meditation. But tafakkur fi khalqis samawati wal ard. You know, this is something which is uh, considered to be a good thing. In, in the Quran encourages it. Most as Muslims, we should actively uh, take time out, and it's a very good thing as well. I personally think, you know, like I've started my running year. When I do my running, when I do my cycling. Just like you start thinking about things, it's very good. You get like 15 minutes just to think about things. No distraction, no phone, no nothing. It's really, really good time to actually just think about the world, think about your life, think about your purpose, think about what you want to do uh, in the coming days or whatever. So I think it's very important that people do these kind of activities. Um, whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, whatever kind of activity you want to do that's going to take you away from distractions, TV, from social media, from you know, all these kind of distractions and and really kind of make you focus uh focus on on the on the on the important things in life. Yeah, so tafakkur is very good. Wa alaikum as salam, boxing MMA, pumping weights. Oh yes, whilst I listen to you in the gym, yeah. I need to start weights, bro. I need to start weights, man. I got my the kettlebells at home. But I need to I think I need to get myself a whole uh bench and and, and bars. I did not get it. So there is nautical twilight for Isha as well. Yeah, so nautical twilight, basically, you know, this Isha, this, basically the issue is, is that when the sun starts to, watch my video, it makes sense when you see my video. If you watch my video on Kuduri, on the prayer salat times, go to my Kuduri se se section and look for Kuduri salat times, prayer salat times. And I, I, I've shown videos of how the twilight works. Yeah, so you have civil twilight. When the sun first goes down, the civil twilight, it lasts for about 45, 50 minutes. And then after that, you have the next level, which is called nautical twilight, with the redness in the sky. And that lasts for about another 45 minutes, 50 minutes. And then after that, the redness disappears. You have a whiteness in the sky, which is called astronomical twilight. And then that disappears. That disappears after about one and a half hours or so after Maghrib. And depending on different seasons, it could be a bit less or more. Yeah, so Imam Hanifa, rahimullah's position is on the, the latest uh, disappearance of the white the astronomical twilight and the nautical twilight is the redness in the sky that's what the sahib bain have taken uh muhammad said personally i do not really follow a particular matter if i want an opinion something i'll try to follow on with the best evidence uh, if it's unclear avoid it i mean i don't know how you decide my brother this is no offense to you yet, but i don't know how you decide which opinion is stronger is it because it makes more sense to you is that why you're saying it makes more sense because something like, like if, let's say, for example, five doctors say something to me. I've got an illness and five doctors say something to me. And I say, look, I'm going to follow doctor number three because his opinion is stronger evidence. Like, 
I'm not a doctor. I'm, I haven't studied medicine. How do I decide whose advice is stronger evidence? So when we when we say, for example, like stronger evidence, stronger evidence to me means if someone has studied something, they can gauge all the opinions. They know exactly what everyone is saying, and then they know how to how to m measure evidence. But if someone hasn't studied medicine and he doesn't know what the doctors are coming from, their school of thought and the ideas, and just says, I'm going to follow doctor number two or doctor number four or whatever, then I don't think that's really following evidence. I think that's probably following something that makes more sense to them. I think maybe that's what you're saying. Uh, is it haram to look at a woman without your lust? So scholars say there's two camps of scholars. One group of scholars says that the original ruling is with lust. In other words, prohibition with lust. And other scholars say that if uh, if you like if you even like have like a feeling that you might get lust by looking at them, then don't look. So this is like the more cautious opinion. But this is very difficult to act upon. Like if you're living in a like a normal world, it's difficult to act upon. You're working in a shop, you're working as a taxi driver, you're driving a car, or you're working as a school teacher, or whatever. It's going to be difficult to avoid looking at another woman, right? So this is why I would say that if it's so you strongly feel in your heart that you're going to get lustful thoughts by looking at this woman, uh, then don't look, lower your gaze, right? Or minimize the amount you need to look. That's the idea. Yeah, Allah. Uh, okay, actually, let me just uh, live stream it onto Instagram, see if uh, Instagram Instagrammers have any questions as well. Live Q and A. Yeah, so so that's basically the answer to that. How's everyone else? How's the Americans besides Sharif? Where's all the other Americans gone? Disappeared, not coming back. Uh, ahla wa sahla, welcome Instagram followers. I hope you guys are all well. Ahla wa sahla. So I've just uh, just to test this out, I'm going to do live stream on Instagram as well as I as as I'm simultaneously doing it on my YouTube channel. Uh, but if you guys have any questions, you can ask questions over here as well. Uh, if you have a bill, go to a debt collector. What do you do? Do you just pay the debt collector? From my understanding, selling debt is haram. So I just if you have a bill. Go to a debt collector. So I don't understand. Uh, the debt collector is obviously there to collect a debt, yeah? So so are you saying the creditor? I don't understand what you're saying. Or are you talking about a specific scenario? So if you owe someone money, that person's called the creditor. So are you is the debt collector the creditor? Okay, I don't know why this is paused. Okay, ahlan wa sahlan, ahlan wa sahlan. Okay. Uh, next, the silent abs. Uh, uh, silent observer. What do you think of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Hussein? I have no idea who he is. Abdul Qadir Al Hussein. No idea who he is. Assalamu alaikum. Do al tariqa al asriya it is accessible in English and Urdu, may get many of us up and running. Tariqa al asriya Oh, yeah. Actually, my teacher wrote that. We studied that in the first year as well. Yeah, it's a good, nice book. So I, I like that book. And a kitab. Ahla wa sahlan. Actually, I might do that book, you know. Actually, let me just make a note of that. Otherwise, it might just become a fleeting thought. Tariqa. All right. What's your opinion on Milad, the Prophet? It's permissible. Uh, okay. Uh, Muslim B, are you allowed to keep away? From 
uh, a relative, if you are harmed every time you come in contact with them, yes. If you are harmed, then definitely. The debt collector buys the debt from the creditor. Oh, I see. Now the debt collector wants to collect the money from the creditor. Uh, the debt collector buys the debt from the creditor. Now he doesn't want to collect the, the debt from the debtor. Yeah, so if you're not, if you haven't sold it to him, you can give him the, the debt. Can you explain what is the point of learning Bay or Sarf and Bay or Salam? So Bay or Sarf and Bay or Salam are basically in today's terms, it's what is known as Forex, foreign exchange. It's a very big business, uh, multi billion business, obviously, in the world today, if not trillion. And uh, Bay or Salam, Bay or Salam is called forward sales. So forward sales are what happens. You know what you call ordering. When you order something bespoke to be made, right? So you order like a house to be made for yourself, or you want like sofas made. That's called bait or sell them. So these are two very important transactions. See, a lot of times when students study, and I found this myself as well, a lot of times when students study buyu, if they don't study according to how it's working in today's times, it just seems very, very detached from reality. Um, that people can't understand what's the point of bait. When, you know, we can't see it. So when I teach my students, I always mention them, like, for example, we go through different types of transactions. Like if a person goes to, you know, Starbucks for coffee or goes to, I don't know, Tesco or Asda to buy something or goes and, and, and pays a taxi ride or hires workers to work at the house. All of these are transactions. And we need to know Islamically what these transactions mean. And ideally, I mean, the point is, what I, eventually what I do is when I build the students up, so the second years we do buyu, third years we do kuduri buyu, and then the fifth year we do uh, hidayah buyu. Eventually, they build them up. Eventually, they can read the terms and conditions of a contract, and then they can break down all the Islamic elements to it. That's the idea. So, you know, there's always transactions going on. When you buy things on Amazon, when you buy things on um on, from, from car boot sales is always a type of transaction that you need to know so that's why bait or sarf is a very important bait and when you study in the book that's giving you the principles of bait or sarf and bait or salam as well it's giving you the principles of it once you understand those principles then khalas it's the same when people say to me why do you why do we study chapters of uh, of wells right when we don't really kind of interact with the well the point is you understand that the principles, the fiqh principles that govern that masala. And then you can extend those principles to new common things that people people, uh, people do. Uh, okay. If a student can only cover one shara of hadith book, which should they choose? Well, it depends which book. Which book are you talking about? So name me a book, then I'll tell you. What is the tariqah of Sufism and its benefit necessity when we are already following Madhab Sunnah? So, okay, this is a good question. Let me explain this question to you guys. So, you know, when it comes to the whole the, the, the whole point of tariqah, so Madhab, it's like a lawyer. You're basically like getting access to a lawyer and a lawyer is telling you what the law is. Whereas tariqah, it kind of tells you how to perfect your, your practice. Like, for example... I'll give you an example. Let's say you wanted to know the rules of how to buy a house and how to sell a car in this country. Then you need law for that. But that law will not tell you how to perfect the way you do things, like how to implement the law into your life. So implementing the law into your life, that requires like a personal trainer. So imagine you had a personal trainer who says, right, right, you need to wake up at this time. Okay, right, you need to eat this. Right, you need to stay away from this. You need to do this. That personal trainer who takes the law and then shows you how to implement the law into your life. That's called tariqah. That's basically what it is. It's just like a personal trainer who, who helps you uh, implement the law into your life. That's what tariqahs are. That's the whole point of tariqah that is. So a lot of people will know the law, but they might not wake up with fajr. Someone would know fajr is necessary, but they don't pray fajr. Someone might know uh, that maybe, I don't know, um, not looking at something that's haram uh, is necessary. And uh, but they might not act upon it, so that is basically where it, where it comes in. Yeah, it's that implementation. Is there per, if is the person who asked dua to dead a kafir? Uh, so what what do they ask from the dead person? What are they asking? Like if a person asks a wall, are they a kafir? 
if a person says to a wall, a oh, wall, please, uh, you know, don't fall down. A good Hadith Sharif book to study after Riyadh al-Salihin in Arabic. Um, so a good Hadith book would be something like Muwatta. Uh, um, Muwatta would be good. Muwatta of Imam Malik, very good book. Yeah, very good book. And even the section of Al-Adab, Kitab Al-Adab in Abu Dawood. It's a very good book. Yeah, definitely, 100%. Wa alaykum as salam, Eskhan, ahlan wa sahlan, ahlan wa sahlan, ahlan marhaban, marhaban, welcome, welcome. Sharif, I will, alaykum as salam, man, your teach wrote the book, really, that's like me saying my mom made all your favorite desserts and I didn't bring. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he's passed away now, he passed away last year. May Allah give him gentle for those. Uh, yeah, but he was a very kind teacher, a very nice teacher, mashallah. What is your opinion? <laughs> Crypto. Uh, so basically crypto this answer isn't a black and white answer there's different types of crypto what I would advise you to do silent is go on YouTube type in IFG and then type in uh, is crypto halal and they've got an amazing article explaining all of this Yeah, because crypto is different crypto is like saying uh, is uh, is food halal now you can say is food halal it requires explanation different types of food different situations of food and all of that uh, please, can you hear what yourself and Salam this time? Just wanted to write. Uh, so you're going to have to. You can watch more. It's actually recorded. So you can actually play back. If you go back, you can play it back. Otherwise, it won't be fair for everyone else to answer their questions. If everyone asks me to repeat what I said, uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be It's not going to be polite. So if you kind of just like play back, you can, you can, you can listen to it there. Uh, if the menstrual period lasts for more than 10 days as a regular habit for many months, maybe years, would it still have the 10 day cutoff rule? Uh, so, yeah. So, if the woman knows that she has a habit less than 10, every time she exceeds 10, she just uses her previous habit as her, as her measure, right? And she discards the extra day. So, if her normal habit is six days, she discards the four days as being uh, excess blood istihada. And if, however, she's been 10 days for years then she just uses 10 days as the until she ever has a habit which was less than 10 days that's basically what happens there ahla wa sahla welcome people on instagram if you guys are watching ahla wa sahla and welcome <clears throat> uh ahmad uh, does urf make something uh permissible or impermissible um yes and no now it doesn't make something permissible and it doesn't necessarily make something impermissible. It all depends. Orf is basically that, that sort of like convention of society which can uh, adjust rules which are ijtihadi rules. Ijtihadi rules only. Yeah, it's only ijtihadi rules. So, for example, like, let's say, for instance, um, a scholar said um, uh, a certain type of, a certain type of uh, dealing is not allowed. Yeah, a certain type of transaction is not allowed. And then time in the future comes where the circumstances change and now that transaction is allowed. Yeah. So, you know, um, for instance, like in the past, there were certain types of transactions which were banned because there was no possible way of monitoring the transaction. But nowadays we have bank accounts, we have, you know, digital sort of like records. So it's very easy to be able to track records of things. Um so that's one example. An example would be something like uh, it comes to, I don't know, words of marriage. So you get married to someone. The words that were used in the past to initiate a marriage might have been very specific. And then now, because the language has changed, society has changed, there's certain types of wording that change. Yeah, but yeah, Urf is a very big topic. Again, it requires sort of explanation there. Uh uh. Ahla wa sahla Muhammad Berhelhi Just learning what's, What was your journey like learning Arabic? Uh, it was tough <laughs> It was tough and it was nice And it was it was, it was was sometimes like easy as well But generally my, I mean I, in a nutshell I mean I've, I've made videos on, on my journey Anyway you can If you go on YouTube and you type in uh, Draw my life uh, Roots of knowledge I've actually explained it there Draw my life Roots of knowledge So in short I went to college 
Um, I got my A levels. I got a place in university to do computer programming, and then uh, I decided that I, I didn't want this course career in life. I wanted to study Islam thoroughly, so I travelled abroad from the UK. I went to Pakistan, and I went to Karachi. And in Karachi, there's a madrasa called Jami Ulum Islamia Banuri Town. I studied there for for uh, and uh, well eight years there, and then one year I did ifta, which was a, a specialization in fiqh. And um, and that's it. And I came back and then I started teaching and I've been teaching, alhamdulillah, for over 12 years, 13 years now, yeah, 12, 13 years. So that was my journey. And I actually, when I first went into studying, I actually jumped straight into Arabic, right? Just pure Arabic. The teacher spoke Arabic and the books were in Arabic. It was, it was a deep end, so it was hard for me. Uh, if I could do it again, I don't think I would have jumped into Arabic straight away. If I had to do it again. I would have gone and learnt the basics of grammar and the basics of things in English and then slowly accustomise myself to Arabic. Because because I was learning Arabic straight away, in the initial few months, I did miss out on a lot of I mean, important things, which later on I did pick up again. But I would generally kind of do that. Uh, S Khan, ahla wa sahla, what are the rulings or, for wudu and salah for someone hooked up to a dialysis machine? Can be up to four hours. Blood is constantly exiting and re-entering the body. Yeah, for this person, then there'd be exemption, and in that situation, they can just pray their salats, um, and in you know take the shafi position on that that wudu doesn't break because of blood exiting, yeah, because that's a, a valid excuse. Irfan, so mashallah, Irfan, I was just actually going to ask about you. I was going to ask uh, Irfan if Irfan hasn't come. I haven't seen him in class for a while. I have missed many lessons of learning Arabic and stuff, etc. As I'm in Lahore, Pakistan since Eid. Please let other teachers know. Indeed, have fallen back. Inshallah, definitely. I will let everyone know. Inshallah. Hope everything is well over there. You're enjoying the hot weather over there. Can parents spy monitor on their kids to protect them from bad influences? Yes, it's possible. As long as the children are young. Uh, may Allah give your teacher the highest level of Jannah. Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. Jazakumullah khair. Uh, Ameen. Yeah, so uh, so that's that basically. So uh, my journey was a bit different than normal journeys, but Alhamdulillah, I did uh, benefit a lot, and I could have benefited more. And you know, just like with anything, you always, when you look back at things retrospectively, you realize um, there's so much more that you could have done. But that's qadr of Allah, and you just carry on, inshallah. So yeah, that's uh, that's the answer. Let's check out Curious Cat. Let's see if there's any. Any answers over there? Any questions? No, no questions. Curious cat. Curious has been quite quiet. MashaAllah. Uh, Rona Hakim is not here. Rona Hakim has been like missing. I think he's got all his answers. Yeah, he's got all of his answers that he needs. I actually put up... Okay, what, what you know what I think I'm going to start doing? In my live streams, I think I'm going to start explaining some of the tweets that I put up. So I put some tweets up. and Sometimes some of you guys ask me, what did you mean by this tweet, right? Because obviously a tweet is limited to how much, how many words you can actually have in the tweet. So I don't know if you guys uh, are following um, some of the tweets that, that I put up, but let me explain because they're quite compressed and, and and short. They might require some explanation. Yeah, so I think I'll uh, near the end of the live stream, I think I'll I'll go through some of them and explain some of the tweets. Uh, Muhammad, may Allah bless our brothers in Pakistan, a country which was founded in a beautiful intention where there are so many beautiful fruits from there. Greeting from Moroccan. Ahla wa sahlan, ahla wa sahlan, my brother from Morocco. Ahla wa sahlan. How do tafweed and isbat differ? So are you talking about in, in aqidah, tafweed and isbat? Yeah. So isbat means that we establish something and tafweed means that we leave it to Allah. Like we don't delve into it. That's that's what tafweed means. Yeah. So imagine like, for example, there's like a, imagine like your boss and your boss tells you to do something. You just kind of like establish, right, my boss has said this, I'm just going to do this. And why has he said this? And, you know, what's the, the, the reason behind all of that? Right. I'm not going to delve into that. I'm going to leave it to my boss. My boss knows. Right? I'm just going to do what he's told me to do. That's what tafweed would mean. So it's bad and tafweed are two things that can work hand in hand. 
Uh, can we say that madhab starts from the time of Sahaba? Of course, yes. Madhab simply means a way that you do something. Madhab, dhahab, is from the word dhahaba, which means like to go. Madhab means a path that you take to go, go somewhere. Yeah, so because all humans, they have their own way of thinking. All humans have their own way of thinking. When you're told, if you tell 10 people to do a task, the 10 people most likely will not all do exactly in the same way. They'll do it in different ways. Yeah, tell 10 people to make tea for you. In fact, what I would suggest, Zed Milo, I don't know if you're, Zed Milo, if you're watching my uh, Evo or Fik series. Watch my Evo or Fik series. I actually put a video up today. And in the Evo or Fik series, I actually show how the Sahaba from the early years were mentioning uh, were mentioning very like, 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 uh, like important aspects of, of the Madhab system about um, how they, they, they kind of uh, uh, did ishtihad how they came up with rulings so what's that series it's a very important that's why I've, that's why I designed that series I designed it for people who have these questions do you have some advice self-discipline I'm not very good at self-discipline so I'm not the best person to ask but I'll tell you how I kind of do things so for self-discipline um, so basically let's take an example let's say for example I want to do running right I want to lose weight so I want to do running so I need to be self-disciplined Right. Self-discipline is opposite to um, discipline by someone else. Like someone else is always monitoring you and telling you what to do. Right. So some people, they require someone else to tell them. But a lot of people, they don't have that luxury of someone else telling them. So what they do is they need to be self-disciplined. Right? They need to do it themselves. The way that you become self-disciplined is you have to have a very, very, very strong incentive. Like your incentive, the reason why you want to do something has to be stronger than anything else like the couch the sofa settee is soft my incentive has to be to get up off the couch and do exercise it has to be stronger than the comfort of the settee or someone's watching a movie or someone is playing a computer game or someone is going out with their friends or someone's going to a wedding or someone's going to under them so all of these are things that will uh, will will test your self-discipline so your your motivation has to be very very strong now, how do you create a strong motivation? You need to have a, like a very good uh, goal that you want to set. So what is your goal? Like for example, let's say, I mean, I'm not telling you, uh, I, I started running and I found that I lost, lost weight whilst running. So, so what's, the, what's, the, what's the way that, that I, I do it? So I think to myself, okay, I've got this top that I want to wear, but I don't want to see like my belly. I don't want to see... So what I have to do, or I've got trousers that I want to be able to tie and without having to breathe in. So, okay, that's my aim now. So every time now I'm going to wear those trousers, I'm going to be checking, have I achieved that? Have I achieved that? And that will make me more, more you know, motivated to go and do more exercise. So, you, so the, I personally think when you, when you look at self-discipline, self-discipline, it requires a plan. If you have a solid plan, you have a strong motivation, you have a solid plan in place and then you have rewards. You reward yourself. That's how three things. Do those three things, I would say. This is my own personal, yeah, my own personal advice. Do those three things and inshallah, anything you want to do, you'll be able to do it. Even if it's like learning learning a, a, a skill, learning a, for people who don't know Arabic, learning Arabic language, learning anything else. Right? You want to do it, you have to have these three things. A lot of people, look at this. A lot of people who want to learn Arabic, the reason why they drop out is because I personally think the motivation is there to learn initially, but the, either the motivation dies away or they don't have a plan in place of how they're going to learn it. Yeah, that's usually the two culprits for that. You tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, um, I personally think that's, that's what I've seen. So you need to have those in place. Motivation, a plan in place, and, uh, in, uh, and uh, reward. Yeah, so MPR, motivation, plan, reward, MPR. That's my, that's my, uh, my, 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 what's it, my acronym for that. Uh, when it comes to concentrate uh, better daily routines, yeah, that, that, that's the kind of thing. But remember, don't try to, don't think, to, just, a lot of people, I think this happens to them, they kind of compare themselves with really super motivated people on, on social media. Don't compare yourself with them, because if you compare yourself with them, you're never going to reach their level, unless you know you you have a different wiring in your brain or you're from a different lifestyle. Just do what you can. 
just just work for some 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 few points. Yeah, you want to self discipline yourself in like two areas of your life or three areas of your life. Just work on those. Uh, is it per permissible? Okay, can parents you yeah, answer that one? Yes, they can. Is it permissible to pray Fajr following 18 degrees timing if we find it hard? Yes, I would say yes. Some object to scholars taking money for teaching, giving lectures, saying that this was not done by the messengers or some companions. Yeah, so, like, let me give you an example. There was a Sahabi called Abu Sayyid al Khudri. It's a long story, but to cut it short, they were on a journey. Uh, they went to go to this village to ask for food. The people of the village refused to give them food. And they were camping outside and all of a sudden the leader of the village got stung by a scorpion or a snake. So they came and said, does anyone know how to treat them? And, and the, Abu Sayyid al-Khudri radiallahu anhu said, I can do it. Uh, but you have to give me some money. You have to give me some like some sheep or goats or things like that. They go, okay, we'll do it. So he came, he read Fatiha for several days. He read Fatiha on him and the guy got cured. And they gave him the wealth. And then he came back and they said, look, we need to ask the Prophet Sallallahu if this is halal. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, what made you, what, 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 who told you that Fatiha is the cure? Who told you? And uh, then he said, give me some of that as well. Yeah, so he showed it was halal. Imam, the Malikis and the Shafis used this as evidence to prove that taking a fee for, 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 the, for that is permissible. Yeah, that's what they used. But the original position of the Hanafi school is that it's not permissible to take a fee for teaching the deen, uh, even be, being an imam or anything. But the but you have to realize that they, the reason they said this was because the government was sponsoring all teachers, all imams were sponsored by the government, were given a wage. So no one, like if you went to a teacher to learn free of charge because they were already paid by the government. Then later on, this fund stopped and then the scholars had no other choice but to take a fee. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to teach. So incentives is a goal. A goal is what you envision to become. To become, you need CD, commitment, dedication. Oh, yeah. Cam, you just worded it brilliantly. Uh, Zed Melo, are the descendants of the prophets more honorable uh, than who are not? They must be in millions by now. So in the sense, they don't have any special status in the eyes of Allah. No one has any special status in the eyes of Allah except someone who has taqwa. That's the Quran says that. So the lineage of the Prophet ﷺ does not mean if they pray Salat, they get more reward than us. No, yeah, that's not something which, which we believe in. But to respect them because they're from the lineage of the Prophet ﷺ is something which all Muslims should keep in mind. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what, what we believe. Fear of loss is also the other side of the coin in regards to self-discipline. Nobody talk about their fears so we can never fully see what... Oh, that's a good point. I like that point. I'll put that up there. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think about that. Yeah, if I don't attain. I think that's that's another side which... Uh, some people, th I think that is the, the thing that a lot of people have with, with this issue, which is, um, you know, fear. Fear can also be... Actually, fear can actually also be a good motivator as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that's that's something which... Are you upon the Matri Aqidah, Salafi Atri Aqidah? Um... Like when people ask me this question, are you on the Maturidi Aqidah? Are you on the Salafi Aqidah? Are you on the Athari Aqidah? Um, so, like, w w if you say to me, uh, if you say to me, for example, like, what is your belief with regards to where is Allah, for example? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. No, I believe that Allah is not restricted to any space or time at all. And uh, the Sifat of Allah, we leave it to Him. So I believe. That the sifat of Allah do not need to be at, uh, 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 interpreted because I don't need I don't need to interpret them. So this is this is why you know many of the scholars have said the the position of the salaf is is aslam is is more is, is, is something which is safer for people. So when people ask me, are you maturi the I I think they don't understand what they're asking. Yeah, I, I don't think they they understand what they're asking. Like, are they uh, like like what? Because usually when they say Ayyumat Ridi or Salafi, they're just looking at two or three points between the ikhtilaf between Salafi. Salafi and Asri are not the same, by the way. Just just to just to make a point on that. Salafi is different than Asri. Yeah, so Salafi is more based upon Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah and people who came after. And Asri is more sound, it's the, it's the Hanbali position. Yeah, so there's a difference between the two. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. Arabic with Suhail. How do you rejuvenate your energy to avoid fatigue and burnout from daily routines? Um, you know, I mean, if you ask me how I do it, I personally do it, I would say this. I would say the way I sort of like do it is you, you, you do it like food. Like when you eat food, if you eat food, what happens? You eat food and you don't eat all your food in one go, do you? You don't like all three meals in one go. Otherwise you get burnt out. But you eat eat as much as you need. And you spread it out right th throughout the day. And that's the same thing I think you need to remember when it comes to routines. When it comes to routines, do not overburden yourself. Just be natural. Let your day flow. Do whatever you have to do. But in your day, set two things, three things, four things that you really need to do. That makes your routine, that is. So maybe on a daily basis, you need to be of exercise. On a daily basis, you need to, um, I don't know, um, watch uh, some sort of like... Some, some interesting uh, video or, or something that can really increase your understanding of a certain area. Um, or maybe a certain type of part of the day, you leave it for your family or anything like that. So I would say when it comes to routines, don't kind of like try to make your routine like a robot routine because we're not robots and we're not designed to be robots. We're designed to be human beings. We have our own feelings. We have our own you know, desires and, and things. So just plan your day. Just do your normal things. You wake up in the morning, you go to sleep at night, you pray your five times salat, uh, you eat your food throughout the day. That routine is fixed, isn't it? So allow the other routines to be enjoyable. When something becomes too much of a routine, I prefer to find this. If I make something too much of a routine, I get a bit tired of it after a while. It becomes like a job. Then you get tired of it. So I, I don't know. Do you guys experience that as well? I always uh, have tomorrow, and so years past, there needs to be F for yeah, yeah, as well. These modern thinkers know. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I think that's a good point as well. Um, people, you know, uh, procrastinating and also the fear of missing out on certain things. This is also a problem that we have. That if I, I have to do this, you know, Sheikh so-and-so has said this, i got to do this, and Sheikh so-and-so said i got to do this. And you're scared of missing out on all these things. Just you know, you gotta you gotta let, let things go. Yeah, let go of certain things. I think it's hard to do, but it takes time. But let go of things. Did you study with Ustad Uthman Farooq? No, I didn't. Muhammad, wa alaikum assalam. Ahla wa sahlan. My brother Muhammad. Ahla wa sahlan. Those of you guys who are on Instagram, ahla wa sahlan. You guys have been quiet. Mashallah. Yeah, just like I like it. <laughs> I think uh, uh, Instagram isn't really the place for Q and A's. Uh, I don't know, do people do Q&As on Instagram? Or is it just... Or maybe they're not, they're not they're that used to it. What's the... Anybody... anybody? Up, uh, what's the score? Has uh, Real Madrid won? won uh, they haven't won yet, but are they ahead or is Liverpool ahead? Let's see. Let's see who's ahead. Oh, Real Madrid. Real Madrid are ahead, yeah? Or oh, is it over? Ah, uh, so Real Madrid won, yeah? In uh, Allah. Liverpool fans are going to be gutted. Yeah, cello. Liverpool fans, don't be upset, yeah? Don't worry. Yeah, Liverpool fans, don't worry about it. Yeah, there's always, you'll never walk alone, yeah? At least you can see that Liverpool fans got a good saying. Y-N-W-A. You'll never walk alone. Uh, is Usul Shashi the most basic text on Hanafi Usul? Uh, not really. Usul Shashi is actually a good advanced text. But it looks at the Masai in a different way. It's from one of the early kind of texts that was written. So basically, when it comes to Usul Fiqh, there's two roots of Usul Fiqh. There's the Shafi rule and there's the Hanafi rule. And then in the 600s, they kind of merge together. So the early works of the Hanafis on Usul is based upon deriving Usul from the Masail of Imam Muhammad. That's what it's kind of really based upon. So it's just purely just a principle where it's been derived from. That's how you work. Whereas when you go into the later works after 600s, like Nasafi, uh, you know, Matan Manar, that's more like a merger. So you see the the different sides to it as well. 
So it's, it's, uh, Sulish, actually, I've got a whole series on my Uruk.com. Uruk um, but yeah, it's, it's a very nice text. I like teaching it. It's very, very friendly. Assalamu alaikum. One of the greatest uh, things and has saved my life is Salah and its particular wudu time direction, etc. Some days are easy, some days not energy. It's always, yeah, definitely 100%. I like that. Definitely, I agree with you. Salat is not an easy thing. Like, it is something which takes time to. You are going to miss Salat sometimes in your life. You are going to miss Fajrs. You are going to miss, you know, and, you know, you just remember that you're trying your best. And every time you miss it, just make sure you make it up again. Yeah, and always ask Allah to keep you. Like, imagine this uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, the Prophet of Allah, yeah, he asks Allah, Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as salati. Oh Allah, make me someone who establishes salat. A prophet is asking Allah, make me someone who's muqeem as salat, establishes prayer. Woman, the re my children's on. So subhanAllah, look at that. Ibrahim alayhi salam, even if he's asking to keep him steadfast on salat and his family, that shows that when we are, as, as average Muslims, when we're trying to, on a daily basis, pray our salats, we are going to come under situations where sometimes, you know, sometimes you're going to get ill. Sometimes you're going to fall into a bit of sadness, some problems in your life. You're not going to be motivated to, to pray salat. But you just like struggle. You try your best. Uh, okay, you got a question on... Uh, you got a question over here. Okay, let's check this one out. Instagram. Any book recommendations for increasing Arabic vocabulary aside from Qasas and Nabin? So, Mr. Abbas, why I generally do is I tell I tell people to read children's Arabic books. I've got a whole list of children's Arabic books uh, that I've uh, made a whole um, um, uh, what's it a file on, and uh, I can't really kind of share it on here for some reason. I'll be able to share it on here, but I would definitely say that this is something which you should you should uh, you should do. So children's books are the best because when people write books for children, they design to be easy. Qasas and Nabiyin, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's like a good way to start your Arabic journey. It should be like the third book you read, maybe or fourth book you read. Otherwise, there's much easier books you start off with, and then you develop after that. And then after that, after Qasas and Nabiyin, you got Qiraat al Rashida, and uh, you know you got books like, uh, and then in, in that list, I've got advanced books in there as well. Um, uh, the list is uh, actually let me just try to search for it let me just put guys just give me a, give me a sec guys uh, okay so Uh, files Arabic reading books okay copy link watch this okay here it is yeah there it is Okay, uh, is it okay when we are unwell and can't perform Salah as proper as when we are feeling well? When we are unwell and can't perform Salah as proper as, yes, inshallah, Allah understands. La yukallif Allah, Allah does not burden a person more than they can bear. People do question A on Instagram, I think you should do that too. If you are on Instagram, you'll reach much wider audience, hence benefit. Yeah, so I don't have per my personal account, I have the Roots of Knowledge account. Roots of Knowledge. So uh, Roots of Knowledge is, is basically the one that uh, my team manages, but I sometimes just go on there. Can you mention the basic text when it comes to Sirat, Tariq, Tasawwuf, just for overview? Um, basic text for Sira, I would say something like Martin Ling's Muhammad. That's a basic text that is very, very easy to follow. Uh, for Tasawwuf, I don't know. I haven't really kind of studied any books on Tasawwuf. Um, but there's a good book called Usul al-Din by Imam Ghazali. Ihyal al is a very long, longer book. Tarikh, are you talking about history, yeah? history books? Um, I don't know any short books on history. I usually read the longer books. 
But if anyone knows any short books on history, you can put in the comments. I'm reading Shifa and Tariq al Khulafa. Are there any books that Tariq al Khulafa by Imam Suyuti? Is that, that the one you're talking about? Yeah, that's a good book, definitely. Which the Muslims have to read to understand our beloved Prophet. Shifa is very good, definitely. It's a bit advanced. Yeah, but if you can read that, then it's good. Uh, S Khan, how many siblings do you have with Saab? Are you one of the. I have, I have uh, five siblings, three sisters, two brothers. I am second in line. Second in the list. Uh, Haider Ali, Assalamu Can you pray with food stuck in your teeth? Yes, as long as it's not too much. Can the non believer complain to Allah on the day of judgment why the Muslim. Why he wasn't born as a Muslim? Uh, no. Assalamu alaikum. You said that it is a list. Where is the list? Yeah, so the list is let me just bring you up here. I've actually put the list up on Instagram, but not over here for you guys. So I'll just put it up here for you guys. Uh, I'm reading. A big list. Uh, lost Islamic History by Firat al Khadib. Okay, I've heard about that, but I haven't read it myself. So, Lost Islamic History. Yeah, check that out. Sultan of Hearts. No, I haven't. I haven't read that. Uh, does taking an inhaler break your fast? According to Hanafi school, yes. And anything that goes down your throat, uh, anything that goes down your throat deliberately will break your fast. So inhaler would break your fast, and that's fine. If you are ill, you can actually take the inhaler, break your fast, and make up the fast after Ramadan. Uh, reclaiming Muslim civilization from the past uh, by Firas al-Khatib. Excellent, excellent. These are good ones. I'll put this up. Would you prefer for me to complete Fikkul Muyassar or Nul Idah before doing your Quduri series? Yeah. Fikkul Muyassar, or do one of those two, or Nul Idah, then start the Quduri. That would be excellent. It will give you a better understanding of how it works. I mean, I am thinking of, uh, I've done some crash courses on each chapter, but I'm thinking of maybe doing like a basic fic for the general public. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll see. It's just something that has been on my mind for a while. So I'll see if uh, how it goes. But generally, I think fic, the best way to teach fic, I personally would say, is for those people out there who want to learn it or who want to teach it. I, from my experience, is this. You first of all, let's say you take the chapter of uh, Hajj. Explain in your own words all of what Hajj is about. What is Umrah about? The different types of Hajj, the different requirements for Hajj, the things that will nullify the Hajj, that are offensive in Hajj. Um, just mention all of that. It will take you maybe one or two lessons to really summarize it. And then you start the text. And that is going to be a really good way of of, of uh, making the student thoroughly understand and that's what I do with my students so for example like at the moment let's say we're on the chapter of Buyu Khiyar Khiyar so what I'll do is I'll try to I'll try to teach explain to the students about what Khiyar Al-Aib is this whole concept of Khiyar Al-Aib about bait in my own words and then after that once they've understood it thoroughly everything's clicked in then we do the text because when they do the text and they haven't understood it's like someone studying, I don't know, maybe something like, um, let's say someone studying the ecosystem. They never heard about the ecosystem. And then they read it from a text. They have to understand the text and they also have to understand new information. So I think it's double trouble. Yeah, double problem for them. If someone prays whilst chewing gum, is the salah valid? Uh, no. Yeah, the salah. Salah would be makru tahrimi. Yeah. In that sense, not valid. So the salah would go through, but we can say makru tahrimi because they're doing an action which is clearly outside the salat. Uh, in what state are the souls in Barzakh? Someone asked me where is Barzakh and the, their punishment and their reward as they wanted to know where the soul. So, first of all, everything besides this world, everything besides this realm that we're living in is something which is non-perceivable. We can never perceive it. It's, it's called ghayb for a reason. Ghayb means the unknown. Yeah. So what that basically means is that we will never know how it works. Like in this world, we can never perceive how it works unless we're told. So when a person goes into their grave, their soul now is in a different realm now. 
How does it connect with this realm? We have no idea. Just like, for example, when a person's asleep and they go in their dream realm, what is the dream realm? Where is it? How does it work? We don't know. So the same thing is with the whole Barzakh issue. It's like the Akhirah issue. We, 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 you can't go on Google Maps and say, right, this is where Barzakh is. We don't, we don't even know how it works. Does it, does it have, like, is there a sun in Barzakh? Is there light in Barzakh? Is there darkness in Barzakh? Is there a sense of touch in Barzakh? Is there a sense of, like, sustenance in Barzakh? We don't know the details of all that. We know little bits. We don't know all the details of how it works. So that's why, if there is something which people don't know, then, you know, we can't really kind of explain it, can we? We're kind of like restricted to how much information that we have. And I know people, as human beings, we want to know how things work. We want to know how Jannah works and we want to know how all of all of these 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 kind of realms work. But in reality, we won't know. We're, our best, we're kind of like guessing Besides what the Sharia has told us, Sharia has told us very little information about the Barzakh. Um, but in essence, the Quran has mentioned that the good souls will be in Iliyin and the bad souls will be in Sijin. So a place called Iliyin is Sijin. We don't know where they are. And uh, the Prophet has told us about the Shuhada and the martyrs that they are alive, but you don't know how they're alive. And that the Prophet said that their souls are put into birds in Jannah. And we don't know how that works, but purification of the heart by Sheikh Hamza Yusuf is a good introduction to the soul. Okay, yeah, so check that out. Assalamu alaikum. One has to oil a hot machine equipment at work and it generates a great deal of smoke that is inhaled. No, that one, because that's not something you're deliberately like inhaling to breathe in. That's fine. Just like if you're cooking outside and you know you're making a barbecue, you have to. There's lots of smoke that goes in your face. So that would not nullify your fast. Uh, I was thinking, I was making dua of dunya things in Arabic in my salah without knowing it was one of the mufsidat, as I was told by Hanbali scholar, it's okay. Yeah, then it's fine, you don't have to repeat it. But again, if you're following the Hanafi school, then don't do it again. I like the analogy of it being like a dream. Thank you for your answer. Pretty much thought the same. Yeah. So, I mean, some people ask me, I mean, it's limited <laughs> of how much I can explain to them. Um... But a lot of people know they want more detailed answers, and you know, and that's the the more sometimes the more detailed you give something, the more you spoil it. Yeah, because our minds can't comprehend beyond a certain limit. Did the Prophet doesn't speak to the people in the grave when he visited the graves? Um, we don't really have any record besides a few incidents. Yeah, like for example, when he spoke to the people of the Qalib of Badr. That, that were in 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 the in the kuffar that were thrown in the badr, in the in the pits of badr, uh, but we don't really have like the person will go and speak to people in the grave. We have no so like authentic record besides that. Thank you for the list. You're welcome. Not to be greedy, but do you have more links like that? Uh, no. So that link, if you open it, there's loads of books in there. Yeah. So if you check out the that that link, there's lots of books in there. Inshallah. Have you read Structure and Chronic Interpretation? I've seen it recommended by several well known guys. Structure and Chronic... No, I don't know. Who is it by? Read Structure and Chronic Interpretation. Let's see. Is, it, is, that, is, that, is that his name? Structure. Structure and Chronic Interpretation. Okay, no, I've never, I've never heard this book. Let's see. Oh, okay, I've come across. Raymond... Farine. Hmm. Okay. I don't know first time I come across it. Have you read it? What do you think of it? Yeah, Allah. Yeah, looks 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 okay. That's good. Is it is it just a summary of chapters? Wa alaikum assalam, Ashraq. Ahla wa sahlan, ahla wa sahlan. Welcome, welcome. Okay, guys, Instagram. I'm gonna be going off now. Uh, so ahla wa sahlan, people on Instagram. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. I'm gonna be still. I'm still on 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 my YouTube channel. So if you guys wanna continue watching, then just come come onto my YouTube channel. 
All right, guys, take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay, let me just uh, put this up. Okay, that's done. Uh, for the new poetry series, mashallah, may its continuation and completion be upon you. Ameen, jazakumullah khair, beautiful dua day, ameen, ameen. Uh, yeah, I like Imam uh, Ali radiallahu anhu. Ali radiallahu anhu's uh, poetry is very nice because uh, because the classical Arabic, the words are like, you know, very deep words that he uses. And he was a very eloquent person. He was well known for his eloquency. So, uh, so yeah, we're going to see, inshallah, how Ali Radiallahu the thing is Ali Radiallahu's poetry a lot of it is very long so I don't know I mean I might have to like break up the one long poem into two or three, even three parts sometimes Assalamu alaikum if one is making up a broken day of fast of Ramadan uh, does it have to start on a new moon or at any time up a broken day of a fast so are you saying I don't understand. Are you saying if someone breaks their fast deliberately or accidentally, or what, how how did it happen? What do you think of Beginning of Guidance? And so, Beginning of Guidance, is a very nice book. Letter Disciple, yes, yeah, good book. Mashallah, very, very sort of like uh, insightful. Yeah, very insightful book. I like it. It's so good for beginners as well. Someone who wants to learn about, you know, um, trying to correct their actions, atmal, all of that. Okay, guys, let me show you guys my other hats. So this is one of my hats. Yeah, it's one of my students. He's got a new company and it's called Salam. Yeah, so called Salam Kufis. Salam. So he gave me these and I said to him, I'm going to wear them on, on my live stream just to show everyone these hats. They're quite nice. I like these kind of hats. They're light. This one's a light design. He had a different one as well. A hard one, those hard ones. Similar to this, but it's hard. This one's a light one, nice. Yeah, you can wrap imam around this. Kind of nice for that. And I've got some other colors here. So I've got three other colors. Got a brown one. Yeah, got a brown. So this is... What do you guys think? Brown color. Brown color suit me? Not suit me? Yeah. Got a brown one. And then got a blue one. So it's like, this is like the other blue one that I've... Just been recently started wearing. It's a blue one. Blue. What size is this? The same. 23, yeah. And then I got a white one. I haven't worn a white hat for a very long time. Yeah, a white hat. For a very long time. Yeah, white. I used to wear a lot of white hats when I was studying in Madrasa. Yeah, white hats. Okay, this, this feels a bit bigger than the other one, blue one. Yeah, so this is white. This is my like pious look, proper angelic hat. Uh, do you read fiction? Uh, at the moment, I don't, but sometimes, yeah, if I see like a short story or something, I might read it. But nothing long. Uh, I, have, I haven't recently read anything long. What about yourself? I've just started it. It's been recommended by Abdul Hakim Murad, Shabir Ali, and Muhammad Hijab. And he discusses several things that you ring composition of the Quran, how structure guys. Okay, interesting. I'll have a I'll have a skim through it. Make up 60 days for intentionally. Oh, then you can start anytime you want. Yeah, you can, you don't have to start at the beginning of the month, you can start in the middle. Only thing is if you start at the beginning of a lunar month, then you fast two months. So two months could be 30 days, 30 days maximum, or 29 days, 29 days. Right, so you could be fasting like anywhere between 58 days to 60 days. But if you if you start in the middle of a month or after the first day of the month, the new month, uh, then you fast 60, exactly 60 days consecutively. Yeah. 
All right, guys. All right. I think I'm going to call it a day, guys. Yeah. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much for turning up, guys, watching. And uh, commiserations uh, to the Liverpool fans, unfortunately. It was uh, not a very successful day for you guys. Real Madrid won. And uh, anyway, maybe next, maybe next year. Yeah, maybe next year you can you can do something. And I hope you guys have a wonderful week as well. Uh, thank you very much. Brown one. Yeah, you like the brown one, yeah? Brown, okay. Brown. Right, chocolate. This chocolate hat. So the chocolate. Actually, I feel like eating chocolate now as well. Please remember my uncle in Duas. May Allah give your uncle... Guys, yeah, make dua for uh, Brother Navid. Remember Brother Nav? Yeah, Navid. His father uh, is in hospital, he's been in hospital for several weeks now. Uh, everyone, please make some special dua for him and ask others to make dua for him as well. Allah gives him Shifa Kamil. Uh, shifa is in the hands of Allah, as we know. Uh, but still, you know, it is difficult to see a loved one in hospital and vulnerable and weak. Um, and uh, it's something which uh, nobody really wants to wants to see one of their loved ones in front of them uh, ill. So may Allah give uh, his father Shifa Kamil and also may Allah give uh, Naveed and his family and also Kam Sabar as well in these difficult times because it's difficult when you see someone ill. Family has to, you know, bear patience and remember that everything is in the hands of Allah. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean. Amin, Zakallah Khair, Zakallah Khair. When I broke my fast slightly earlier because I was told that the Prophet had no clock last week question, do I need to do No, you do, uh, you just have to make one up. Make one up. Football with helmets, right? No, no, no. So, what you guys call soccer, basically. Yeah, what you guys call soccer. Yeah, I can never say that word, soccer. It's just too hard. Football is easier. Yeah, football. All right, guys. So, Jazakumullah Khair. And I just want to mention one book here. Yeah, so this is actually a good book I like. And uh, I regularly read this book. It was just here, so I just thought I'd share with you guys. This is called Qawaid fi Ulum al Hadith. This is a very, very good work in Usul Hadith. And especially when it comes for Hanafis. Yeah, for Hanafis as well. And this is actually the first volume of I'la Sunan. So, have you heard of the 19 volume book, I'la Sunan? which is a literal encyclopedia of hadith uh, for Hanafi fiqh. The 19 volumes written by Mawlana Dhafar Ahmad Uthmani. Mawlana Dhafar Ahmad Uthmani. Uh, he's written this, and this is like a really, a really good work. This is this one first volume. But I would only recommend this, this work to someone who has studied some usul, usul hadith. Right, so studying Usul Hadith, first of all, if you do my 21 lessons of Usul Hadith, and then after that, um, do like Nukhut al fikr then do this, this, then this is excellent. I generally kind of advise people to study this when they're studying something like um, Ibn Salah, Muqad Ibn Salah. Yeah, so so it's, it's, a, it's a technical book, it's a very technical, it wouldn't be something for beginners to just pick up and start reading. Zakhla uh, khair, you're welcome. Muhammad, last fiction book I read was Tinker Taylor Soldier by a Spy by John Le. Oh, okay, was intended tending to read 1984 oh, is good. Yeah, 1984. I think I read that a few years ago now. 1984 is good. There's actually an audio that you can listen to. Yeah, listen to the audio if you if you like listen to audios. Um, uh, it's a very good book, 1984, and also a Farmhouse. Yeah. Uh, what is it called? Animal Farm, not Farmhouse. Animal Farm. Yeah, George Orwell's Animal Farm is very good. It kind of opens up to you like what possibly is happening around the world to humans. Assalamu alaikum, Zed. Ahla wa sahlan. Is the Arabic too advanced? Yes. Yes, it's a bit advanced. What's 1984 about? 1984 is about basically, it's like uh, the government cracking down on people, people's. Uh, Freedom, yeah. So it's like a totalitarian government, you know, that is just cracking down on people, 
So read it. You just go to YouTube, type in a 1984 audiobook, and just listen to a bit of it. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Sheikh, did you listen to podcast by Jonah? No, I haven't listened to the podcast yet. In fact, I haven't even listened to the podcast by with uh, Muhammad Hijab. Yeah, for some reason, I've just been very lazy. Uh, but today, I don't know, my arthritis is playing up. I've been getting like pains in my neck and my back. I think the weather just all of a sudden changed. So I'll get my pains in my arms, in my neck. Yeah, so I have to make myself some uh, some turmeric turmeric tea. Hopefully, I'll have some turmeric, inshallah, for that. I was actually going to go for a jog now. I might actually go for a jog. Yeah. Have you watched Diary of a CEO podcast? No, uh, I actually wrote it down. Yeah, you mentioned last time to me. I actually did write it down. But I still haven't had a chance to actually go through it. But yeah, inshallah. I've got a whole list of things I'm going to have to go through. Night jog. Yeah, night jogs are very nice. Like I'm, I, It's addictive, like I told you yesterday. Seriously, it is addictive. The night jog is peaceful, quiet. You just go for a jog and you put your earphones on. And you just do a little run. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I like it a lot. I personally think in exercise and these kind of things, we we generally need to stay fit. I mean, especially you know, unfortunately, uh, Muslims and Asians are not not very the the fist fitness of people naturally, and uh, we need time to ourselves as well, own time. Where you get time to think, where you're away from all distractions, and you just like nature with nature. Uh, are you are you back on your bike rides? Yes. So tomorrow, inshallah, hopefully, I've got a bike ride tomorrow. 30, 40 miles. Uh, he wrote 94 in 1940. It's set in a dystopia world where the big brother name for the government will span everyone. Yeah. Did you tell us? The type of tea today. Today was basically hot water with shalajit. So it's something called shalajit. It's like this this resin that's released from a mountain in Pakistan, and you take that and then you add it to hot water. It kind of like gives your body sort of like energy. Um, would you cycle? Of course, definitely. So night cycle is good. With your lights on, of of course, lights on. No, I'm not ready to become shade yet. Exercise is very important for mental health. Yeah, mental health as well. Rest the shoulder. Yeah, no. So, so, so my neck, it's basically I'm getting my neck over here. goes down here. It's, it's here. It's here. It's a bit down and a bit in my knees. Yeah. Uh, should see more people joining the podcast now. Liverpool have lost. I need to change what is a person's near when going to the gym to get most reward? You don't have to have a near when you go to the gym. You just like getting fit is a good near itself, right? Trying to get fit is a good near. Trying to stay away from bad is a good near. But you don't have like a special near you have to have. Fitness for Life is a men only gym, no music, and have very good circ classes. Okay. Where, where is Fitness for Life? When will you do the live trying to speak out of podcast? Hopefully next week. I keep saying next week, next week, next week. Hopefully next week, inshallah. Uh, is our podcast still on? Uh, it's been on pause at the moment. But hopefully uh, next week, inshallah, I'm going to try to start it again. With your symptoms, it sounds like you need D3, 4,000. Yeah, I've got oh, D3. Oh, what's that? Vit vitamin D3. Yeah, I've got vitamin D3. I've got 3,000 on. I, use, I take a 3,000 on. Yeah, maybe on 3,000. Four, you're saying 4,000. Yeah, I might need to take 4,000. Is Tarawih classed as Sunnah Mu'akkada according to the Hanafis? Yes. All right, guys, I'm going to finish it there. Thank you very much, guys, for joining today. As usual, may Allah bless all of you and keep you guys uh, happy. Uh, and, uh, you know, the rest, guys, the rest. Let's make dua that my uh, jogging goes well. How much does sister Asma charge? I'm not sure. You'd have to speak to her. So it's her own personal thing. So ask her, inshallah. Um, 
So would it be sinful to miss it continuously? If a person deliberately missed it out um, continuously, then I would say there's a fear of sin. Fil harakati baraka. Naam, naam. Fil haraka baraka. Naam. That's a, in, in Balagha, you call that jinas. It's called jinas. Yeah, there's like two words that are very similar. The different types of jinas. So this is like similar words. Haraka and baraka. All right, guys. Take care, inshallah. Have a wonderful weekend. And uh, check out the videos as well. Check out the Evolution of Fiqh video that I put up today. And check out the videos I put up in the week as well. And have a nice one. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.